are you doing today? Good, how are you? Hi. Look, I'm doing good. You guys gave me a nice little binge during Thanksgiving. I got my favorite <laughs> life watching the series, so thank you. But oh, one good. of the things that I really appreciate, especially with your character arcs, is really seeing where we found all of you when your characters are first introduced to where we find them at the end of the season. And I think it's some of the best fleshing out that I've seen in quite some time with characters. And I wanted to know for you, how was it being able to like really go on this journey like with all of the different, like, you know, bumps that you've had with, you know, issues, like how has that been actually playing characters with such depth? I, I guess for me, it's, it's, it's interesting because like uh, when we, when we were shooting season four, even, even season three, where Robbie is personally, um, I feel like for me, it, it adds a lot of weight to you. So like those seasons, like, I didn't get any sleep like whatsoever. Like I was only getting like one to two hours of sleep. I was showing up. I was surviving on caffeine for like three, three and a half, four months. And um, it's just, it, it's interesting because it does add a lot of weight even to personal lives and you don't really get rid of it until you're done shooting. So it, it can be a lot sometimes, but it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just so, so grateful for, you know, the, the writing this last season. I feel like, um, the characters feel so human to me. And, um, you know, I think, I don't really think you can say anyone is a good guy or a bad guy on this show. And that's what I love so much about it. Everyone has a different opinion on everyone. And that's always been one of my favorite things about these characters. Yeah, I think, um, you know, in a weird way, especially the last, you know, over this last year and getting ready, especially for everybody to see season four, I think I've been super nostalgic the, the last few months of just like, looking at four and and then looking back kind of as as we've grown and and I have realized like how many points in my life I like now mark by the like milestones that Samantha's hit and kind of like <laughs> my growth with her like I've now lived as her and and grown with her for so many years that now it's like I, it she's like my child like it feels like it's like a like a part of me it's like my diary it's like this this part of my life that I can press play and like watch happen and, and I've taken life lessons away from this show because you know the the characters are just so you know interesting and and deep and diverse and and it's just become like you know more more than just a show for me more than just a job it's it the characters mean so much to me and I feel like it's it's meant a lot to to grow as a person because of it but also too I mean there's a power shift you know from the young adults to you know, the adults in this series, because I feel as though in season four, you've all, your characters have decided to do what makes them happy, um, to push themselves down a path that hasn't been chosen for them by their mentors or the adults in their lives. And I wanted to talk to you about, you know, reading the script for this season. How was it when you kind of saw where this power shift will happen for all of your characters? I think, well, I guess for all the others, it was a lot, it, me personally, it was a lot to figure out. Um, just because, you know, we have a lot of times followed what the adults do and you're getting told what to do. And now, like you said, it's that power shift of, of understanding, oh, oh, now my character gets to make his own decisions. Okay, how is he going to make those decisions? What's he, what's he going to do? Uh, how is he going to react to that? How is he going to communicate now to even the adults? Um, so it was, it was a whole different dynamic of, of trying to <laughs> see what see what was going to come out as a character uh so it's very interesting it's very interesting yeah I loved it it's, it's all the things you I wish I could have done at 17 in high school you know <laughs> I, I think it telling a high schooler to take charge of your own life and to lead your own path and you know that age is such an important one you're choosing you have so many choices so I thought it was um it, it was fun fun to play I don't know if I have an answer because I don't know if Samantha has an answer, especially going out of season three and into season four. I think that's kind of part of Samantha's journey is, is trusting herself and coming into her own. I don't know if she has all the answers for that yet. Cause I think her dad is, and, and Mr. Miyagi have been kind of these two huge pillars in her life and her mom as well. But I think spe specifically in her relationship with karate, like her dad's representation of Miyagi Do and, and Mr. Miyagi, as she knew him as a child, like I think are such pillars for who she is that, kind of her journey has been maybe figuring out like if she didn't stand on those two, where is she? And, you know, that's something I'm excited to see people 
see Samantha figure out. Well, I'm excited to see everyone watch this season, but I just want to thank all of you for taking the time to speak with me. I really appreciate you. And I'm just sitting in love and light your way. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, likewise. Here, Bye. wait. Hi, how are my favorite friend of me's doing? <laughs> He's awesome. doing it. We're look, good. Look, one of my first questions that I have for the both of you is I really love this kind of switch of generational power in this season. It's almost as if the, you know, the young adults, they've decided that they're going to take control of their own destinies. And I really wanted to speak to you about how was that reading the script and seeing that, you know, for once the kids are going to have to teach you guys a little bit or two on how to be better. Yeah, that's great. I mean, there's a bit of life there. You know, my my kids are now in their 20s. And uh, I re remember those times, you know, you're constantly you're you're handing off your wisdom and teaching your, you know, uh, your beliefs, but you're also learning and being educated through, through, through them. And, and, and the truth in that with Cobra Kai and this season and, uh, and the show and in, in it's in itself is that there is the multi-generational lessons learned. I mean, Johnny and Daniel, for the most part, uh, really have good intentions, different opinions, but good intentions going forward. And sometimes they need a reality check that is brought forth by, by uh, their students. And I think that's a beautiful two-way uh, two street. Yeah. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. I mean, I, you know, I love that the, the, the kids, especially, you know, Miguel's saying, you know, why you want to, Johnny's trying to figure out how he's going to, uh, you know, come at Daniel and, and he learns a lesson from Miguel and, and rethinks it. Um, it's great. I mean, that's what happens in life is we, you know, the young generation sometimes have a more pure look at the world. And so, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot to learn there. You know, it's a two way street. That's what even in a, in a, in a, in a parent relationship or even a sensei student relationship. Um, so this, it plays out well in the show. But also, too, one of the messages that I love that even, you know, young adults are being able to get out of this season is really about making sure that you're living your life for yourself and not for the dreams of those around you. Right. I wanted to know for the both of you, what advice would you have anyone with for anyone who's struggling with that right now? Yeah, that's that's a great uh, question. I mean, yeah, you, you allude to. Um, you know, finding there is an element in, in the original film franchise where Miyagi would say you have to find your own way. And uh, and that's that's part of the, the story uh, with Daniel and his, his daughter, Samantha, um, him realizing that he can't force uh, the, her direction, sort of the roots and wings uh, uh, concept. And I believe in that you create the strong roots and uh, and then the, the foundation, but then need to let the, the, you know, someone fly. It's the, it's the, it's the bonsai tree. I mean, all these karate kidisms do pay off in real life, you know? So um, people uh, uh, struggling with that, it's, um, you know, it's finding your center and, uh, and then branching out, you know, not so easy always to do. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, you know, I was raised on, my dad always told me, find something you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life. You know, find yourself, find your love, find your passion, do what you love to do. Don't measure yourself by other people, um, you know, and that's a challenge today with kids, you know, with all social media and everybody telling you who and what you're supposed to be and people with yep. YouTube channels with 5 billion followers and all I need to be that to be relevant. You know, it really is, is, is the micro of uh, just being true to yourself, be true to yourself and it shall follow as a night unto day, you can be false to no man. So be true to yourself in your small circle. And that's how I've lived my life. And my life has bred all this amazing fruit with my family, with my friends, my career. Um, and so I, I would say, you know, don't look outside yourself, the roads inside of you. Um, and you everybody is unique and special and has a special gift and no two people are alike. So find your journey, find your path and don't measure yourself by anybody else. And don't be afraid to fail because that's a lot that the show is about is failing, falling forward as Ralph and I always say, you know, it's like, you know, you make a mistake. We're not perfect. Um, these characters aren't perfect. <laughs> um, and uh, that's why it's so, so rewarding to play this character and, and to be part of the narrative of this show. So if the kids are getting anything, I know we meet lots of kids that are learning karate, they want to go out and that's a great start because that teaches you self confidence that teaches you, um, you know, gives you a center focus respect all the things that are key to having a successful life. So I think, you know, so many kids that we meet and adults too that are starting there, it's a good place to, to, to bow, to humble yourself and to step onto a mat. That's where it all begins. Look, thank you for all these words of wisdom. 
I feel inspired right now. <laughs> Hold on a minute, second. I gotta read. I gotta see if that was. A, thank you so much. That was my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, but that's what this that's what this this show brings out in us is it we we really get a chance to dig deep and and then we have these these young actors to chime off of and that's the richness to me that's the that's the that's the gold of all of this that's what's I think the human humanity in the show that that's that's resonating more than the fun the karate and the the, the nostalgia and the rock and roll. Well, look, I appreciate the both of you speaking with me today. I really really appreciate you and I'm just sitting in love and light your way and I really hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Rhonda. Thank you. Bye. Hi, how are all of you doing today? What's up? How are you? Good. I like your background. Thank yeah. you. Look, I'm a part of the group too. I don't know <laughs> fight, but, yeah, I'll cheer everybody on from the sideline. One of the, <laughs> one of the first questions that I have is I really love that this series is teaching you know, young people, which is something that it took a while for me to understand is how to make sure that you're living your life for yourself and that you're not living trying to fulfill other people's dreams. And I love that we get to see that with the characters in this season. And I wanted to know, like, how do you make sure that you're doing what makes you happy and making sure that you're on the path for yourself instead of doing what, you know, everyone else wants you to do? And you can speak either personally or you can speak professionally just navigating the industry. I play a lot of mm -hmm. Pokemon and that keeps me sane. It's true, he does. Yeah. I love Pokemon. That was He's got a limited edition DSI. <laughs> yeah, um, I, go yeah, go for it. No, oh, oh. Uh, I was just gonna say. I mean, yeah, it can be really hard in this industry, uh, especially because there's so much um, criticism that someone can get. You know, it's all about uh, doing the auditions, and you have to realize you're not gonna get most of it, and you just kind of have to be okay with that and comfortable in your own skin. And I really do think that Cobra Kai does show that well. Uh, my character, he's always been true to himself he's never really compromised who he is it's kind of resulted Whoa, in like fired. a couple of Whoa. broken noses yeah hawk <laughs> yeah no no hawk hawk and dimitri are best friends now but yeah he, he never compromises and I, I think that's you know something you could live by um you know i think just surrounding yourself with people uh that are important to you is is uh probably the like what helps the most like having homies like Gianni and Jacob, I feel like are are important and people who are like-minded and, you know, uh, have the best intentions for yourself and you have the best intentions for them, I think is is honestly probably the best thing. You know, and also I'm, you know, I'm infinitely appreciative for my family and like, you know, their support system. But yeah, just surrounding yourself with people who are like uplifting and, you know, making sure that you're doing the same for them. That's, that's, that's all it is. And Jacob. Did you have anything to add? Because I think Pokemon was totally a fine answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I was say show us my answer, but I, I really think uh, I am the, the, the kid I am today uh, because of all the good people I've had uh, surrounded myself with, uh, thanks to my parents and my friends. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think surrounding yourself with good people um, leads to a happier life. And also playing Pokemon. I just and also to playing play. Pokemon. That's surrounding yeah, yourself Pokemon. with good people, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we have some really interesting like team ups, like showdowns. I really like that they switched things up a little bit. Like it wasn't as the audience would expect it to be. And I wanted to know, like getting the script and seeing like what is actually going to go down this season. What was your reaction to that? Oh, I remember sitting in our uh, kitchen and on the dining room table and we had episode 10 and we were all sitting around the table and Shola was sitting down reading it. And when it got to the final fight, he was like, and this happens, and this happens. We were all like, ah! That, that was super fun. Like, we all read it together like it was well, like we were watching it. Look, I was watching on Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving, and I was like, I was about to go to sleep. I was like, I can't binge this whole series in one day. And then, like, as the last episodes, we got to the final. I was like, what? Like, what's <laughs> happening right now? So, yeah, it was the same reaction. How about uh, Shalo or Gianni? What was your reaction? Well, Shola, we kind of know what your reaction already was. <laughs> Gianni, you want to uh, go for it? Yeah, sure. Uh, it was just really awesome getting to see Dimitri go from season one, kind of being like this uh, nerd that got his, yeah, yeah, a weenie. He's a weenie hut junior. <laughs> um, go from that to now in season four, actually competing in the All Valley and you know, kind of holding his own. Um, he, Whoa, yeah, they don't he's know that yet. Oh no! Oh, this no, is no, gonna no, come no. out after the show comes out. Yeah, it's a season four. 
Um, <laughs> Jen's like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm fired. Uh, yeah, no, it's just really cool getting to see the character kind of grow as far as a fighter goes. It's it's so much fun and it's a lot of fun to rehearse with the boys doing all sorts of karate. Well, yeah. look, I, I appreciate all of you taking the time to speak with me. I really, really enjoy where we've gone with all the seasons. So I'm just in a love and light your way and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you Thanks so much. Everyone. Nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you. Hi, how are you doing today? Hi, it's you, Rhonda. Oh, you look awesome with that poster behind you. It looks great. I want to be a part of the show, too. I want to. You are right now. <laughs> <laughs> look, you know, I really want to know for you, how was it, you know, coming back, reprising your role and being a part of, you know, this new generation that does such a good job of accomplishing what we all grew up on with the Karate Kid? Right. Um, it's been such a fulfilling experience because it is taking this, you know, archetypal iconic character and bringing it full circle. So for me, it was just um, such a joy. And to come into this world, having been a fan, having watched the first, you know, a uh, few seasons of it, and then to be able to um, step into this world and not only with the OG crowd, but also with these incredible young actors, they have such a great cast. Um, so I felt it was such a privilege and an honor. But also too, I love that we get to delve deeper into your character. You know, a lot of times when we're introduced to these characters in the films, we never get to do as much of a deep dive to help us understand, you know, why they are the way that they are. I mean, how was it really breaking down, showing a backstory of everything that your character actually went through before we initially met him? Well, that was such a selling point that um, when I first um, met through Zoom, the creators, and they said, we have this whole backstory mapped out and this whole arc. And, you know, I quickly realized, oh, we're taking this, you know, somewhat two-dimensional character from the film and making it this three-dimensional character. And that was a huge selling point for me to say, to come back into this acting world and to, um, to be able to really live, you know, this rich, full life. And yes, you deliver on all the great Terry Silverisms, but still, um, who is this guy? And they answered such an important question for me was, what has this guy been up to for the last 30 years? Um, so it was really exciting to, you know, say, yeah, I want to go along with on that ride. But one of the things that really stood out to me was the whole theme of we're seeing with the teenagers in this series of making that decision to start living your life based on what you want and not what everyone else wants. And we really get to see the reverse of that with your character, who almost seems like they were kind of missing out on life, like they kind of checked out for a moment. And I wanted to know, like, what advice do you have for people, you know, who are really struggling to do what makes them happy? In real life, we're asking this. Too. Yeah. Oh, my God, it is the most important thing. And it is such a great and relevant question to commit to what your path is, if you believe in something, just to go for it, no matter what anyone says. If you, you know, if you're looking for that support, just do it, it will come, you know. You have to put in the hours, you have to put in the work, and a lot of that is really lonely. But then once that takes off, sure, there's so many people around you. But I think the start of that journey is, is such a, 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 a singular and brave first step. You have to make yourself and make that commitment. And it's just believing in it. And it's not, and I think when you're thinking, oh, is this the right path? Oh my God, there's so much pressure on you. If you believe, if you feel something is right, just go for it. And it may veer off this way, or, or you may go back down the hill and start up the hill in a different way. That's all okay. The thing is not to be stagnant, but to just keep mo moving forward, especially in our world today. It's like, put good work out there, put your, your, your authentic self out there, because we need that more than anything. Look, I can't even follow those words of wisdom up with anything. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> You're awesome. Look, I just want to thank you so much for speaking with me today. And I'm just sending love and light your way. And I really hope you have a great rest of your day. I appreciate your time. Have a great holiday. Thank you. Bye. Hi, Hi Charles. How are you today? Hi, How are you? Good. I like your background. You know, I got to stay in a thing. We got to stay on things. <laughs> Look, I had so much fun binging this season. And one of the first questions that I wanted to ask all of you is, we really see a shift in power. 
um, from, you, you know, really the teenagers taking control of their own destiny and really having to teach their parents and remind them why everyone is here. And I wanted you to talk about, you know, the decision to really have this change in power, really of what we've kind of been leading up to over the course of these past few seasons. Well, it's something that we've been exploring since the beginning of the show. You know, we, we love the generational uh, relationships and the generational comedy, especially with Johnny and Miguel, even back in season one. And even though Johnny was the sensei, there were times where Miguel was teaching Johnny about modern life. But as the seasons have gone on and these characters have had more experiences, especially all the young characters have, uh, you know, seen have themselves gone through whatever conflicts they've uh, they've had and whatever training they've had they've also seen the problems in their parents lives and in their sensei's lives and it's become more of a give and take where both sides are the students and both sides are the teachers it was a really phenomenal season for that in season four one of the things that i do appreciate about this series is you're actually allowing teenagers to be real teenagers you know, even though it's a show about, you know, teaching us about lessons that both adults and teenagers can, you know, live through. I like that they're kind of like, I'm like, at first I was like, are these teenagers bad? I was like, they are cursing, they are saying all these things. But I think it's indicative to how teenagers are. And I wanted you to talk about making that decision of actually allowing them to be representative of how teenagers are today. Well, that was a big part of the show, you know, just on the way in was exploring what teen culture and teen life is like, you know, without the karate war going on. You know, you have teenagers like, you know, Miguel at the top of the, the series with Dimitri and with Eli, who are kind of trying to figure out where do they fit in in school? You know, how do you make friends? What's their social dynamic like? You have, you know, Mary Mouser's character, you know, Samantha, who is kind of coming out of a very you know close friendship with with a friend and then trying to find this this new life with the popular girls and what does that mean for old friendships and you know little by little you know we we dug in as you meet Johnny's son you see that he's having a much different teenage experience and you're seeing what that experience can be like without you know a, a real father or mother figure um, at home who's really you know keeping an eye and guiding him and we wanted to really present all of those characters as grounded and real as possible within this universe before they all start getting sucked into uh you know this karate drama and then use that as a way of amplifying and you know introducing the conflict and the story as it relates to you know to real whole grounded characters but even on top of that you do such a beautiful job this is probably one of the best uses of like marrying all of the movies in the franchise into a TV series. I mean, can you talk about the work that it takes to really do such a fantastic job of blending everything in to still pay homage to, you know, the films that we all grew up on? You know, it takes a lot of work to make Cobra Kai, but most of the work was done over the course of our lives, just watching the Karate Kid movies over and over and over again as fans. And so by the time we started writing the first episode of Cobra Kai, we had all this knowledge of what, you know, these characters were like uh, in the past, all the famous lines, famous scenes, the lessons of all three Karate Kid movies, including the fourth movie with Hilary Swank. I mean, we saw everything. And so we have this encyclopedic knowledge in our minds, um, but we're telling a present day story. We're telling a story now those, those Karate Kids of the eighties are parents and they have teenage kids. And we're telling a modern story, but we have all these memories of our characters that were shot in movies, you know, 30 years ago. And we we all the time as we're writing have flashbacks to the the lessons and the scenes that we love from the Karate Kid. And we're able to infuse that into the show. And it really makes it nostalgic in a way that doesn't feel forced. It feels like if you've watched these movies, you are you really feel like this is a part of the Karate Kid universe. And yet you feel like you're not being pandered to. It's you're, you're 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 following a modern like present day story. Well, look, I thank all of you for just bringing some great television to our screens. I'm sending nothing but love and light your way. I'm so happy that you decided to speak with me today. And I just really hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Uh, thank, you thank you very you much. So much. You as well.